My name is Frank Bassa. I'm the president and CEO of Granada Gold Mines. We have a high-grade mine in northern Quebec on the Cadillac Lake for a producer. And I'm here to talk about our progress going forward. Frank is here. I'm um, right. Okay, we we got to we got to talk about this. I've been following your story for a while. Uh, I've been yeah, obviously before this interview, read up uh, all the press releases, all the information that's out there. There's a lot of moving parts. The last two three years, a lot of moving parts. I'm not quite sure what I'm meant to be looking at. Well, what, can you tell me what is the story? What am I meant? To, what am I investing into? What do I need to know? You see, what we did was it was kind of a tough market for all the juniors, so we just didn't sit still. We did uh, initiate a 120,000 meter drill program. Uh, we did 20,000 meters. Uh, what we were looking for was what can we find at depth? Majority of the drilling we've done is all near surface, 150,000 meters. We spent about 72 million, came back with a very nice resource, but we think the resource is a little light analysis. So, uh, and also during the quiet time or when the market was down, we did two 500 ton bulk samples. And sure enough, you know, they came back at four grams a ton versus the geological 43101 of two grams a ton. So it looks good. Uh, so we want to carry on with some larger bulk samples. That's why we kind of indicated we'll build a plant on site. We've already went out and met with the contractors and what kind of equipment's available to do this. Basically, it's a sampling plant that'll produce product. And we want to carry on with our 120,000 meter drill program. We have 100,000 meters to do. So we put out some news releases indicating of what we've hit. And one of our highest grades was like 107 grams of ton gold over four meters. But we had a lot of these high grade hits. Uh, so it's a high grade mine. Historically, they mined as a nine to 10 grams underground open pit. It was three and a half to five grams a ton. Uh, but we have a very conservative, very robust 43101 uh, all in measured indicated inferred is about a million ounces. Uh, open pit, like I said, was 540,000 ounces at two grams. We think it's four, and the bulk samples agreed. And underground, we have it at 4.6, but I think it more likely will be closer to nine to 10 grams a ton, as was my say, historically. I'm not sure we're talking about the same company because I'm looking at a market cap of about six, seven million bucks yeah. here. So the market's either heavily discounting you, and I want to understand why. Or you're talking about something else. What's going on? No, the, the, the reason is we took in a lot of flow through, which was a huge mistake on my part. And that devastated. Like, you know, these people hold uh, the paper for one month, uh, for four months in a day. And then millions of shares are dumped. Like, you know, we used to have market days. By 10 o'clock, they dump 5 million shares. So it spooks the market. Everybody leaves. They think something's wrong with the market. And we kind of tell them, look, you know, take a look at another company in our area. Same resource. We have all our permits. We're shovel ready. And they have a hundred million market cap. Well, we have a five to seven million market cap. It was the flow through people that, that devastated our market. Right. And, and, you know, on, in a downturn, like we've had, of course, there are low buyers. See, I've done flow through in the past, but when the market's strong, it gets absorbed. Market was weak. Yeah. You, know, you look at it. For years, the market was fairly weak, not just for our stock, but you look at any junior, it just basically devastated, uh, devastated these juniors. So all we really did, uh, you know, we tried to evaluate, reassess, we stayed alive, which is pretty good. You know, I, when you look at this, this, uh, this market, and I think we might be coming into probably the craziest gold market, uh, in our lifetimes. Okay. Well, well, let's, let's look at some of the, Okay, so mistake with flow through in terms of timing. Um, I guess you're probably not the only one, but but ne nevertheless, we need need to fix it. So let, let's let's look at how you can move this forward because you're talking the game of a soon to be producer, right? That, that's the kind of language and the vocabulary you were using with me. So, talk to me about this bulk sample, and then we'll kind of get onto the open pit, and we'll get onto the underground, and we'll look at the grades for each of those, and we'll look at the conversations around mills and the technology, etc. But First of all, the bulk sample that you're doing, were you able to kind of monetize that? Well, I, I think 500 ton bulk sample is really not really significant uh, of, of uh, to say really the ore body should be four grams or whatever. Uh, so we're looking at doing something larger. Originally, we called it the rolling start. We did have a milling agreement at that time with a group called I Am Gold. I Am Gold was going through a lot of challenges. Uh, they're back on their feet doing very, very well. 
And, uh, and uh, you know, they were supposed to mill uh, about 600 to 1.4 million tons for us over three years and actually produce uh, 80,000 ounces. Uh, so we had a grade at that time of five grams a ton. We're fairly confident of that because it was an area where the previous operator mined it at five grams a ton. Uh, but, you know, things didn't happen. Um, you know, we, we designed our, our mine to be a shipper. Yeah, when you really look at it, we didn't have 2 million ounces. I think 2 million ounces is kind of a critical threshold to meet. And, uh, you know, we did a PEA and then we did a PFS. And we said, look, guys, a million ounces, the economics are not there to build a mill on site. Eh? It's not. And, and so we got our permits to be a shipper. It took us two years, uh, you know, spent $6 million in studies. Uh, so we're shovel ready, right? It's open pitable. Uh, grade will probably be in that 3.5 to 5 grams a ton. We have it now at two grams, but what we really want to do is attract people to take us out. Uh, we designed this to be a, a takeout candidate, paper for paper. And uh, on the Cadillac break, there's very little rock that's permitted. I think we're the only site in Quebec and Ontario that have a permitted uh, resource that's a million ounces. And, uh, you know, shovel ready. Uh, there's a whole bunch of mills in here. There's only one mill in that whole area between Quebec and Ontario that is running full. All the other mills are are looking for feed. And, and so, so let, me, big... let me be clear. So it's it's designed to be a takeout target. So by who? Mills or other gold companies? In, other in the... gold companies. Right. They, they, yeah. And who, who's this? Um, you know, is that a handful of people? Is it more? I mean, what's, what's that look like? You can need competitive yeah, attention yeah, yeah. to drive we, the price up. Because getting 20, 30% premium to today's valuation doesn't, account to a whole much does it yeah the, the thing is uh right now you, you look at it uh the main wow. the biggest players like nico eagle and they they grew by acquisition they're actually running out of rock they have multiple mills and they can't keep the mills full so uh our deposit right now is small a million ounces is small two million may be still considered small but when you look at it we're only 20 percent explored we have permits getting permits in quebec now it's a challenge you know it took us two years and, you know, even at the end of the day, it was pretty tough getting the permits. It, it wasn't like, it's not just dealing with the municipal environment. You have to talk to the communities. You have to talk to the First Nations. And in that two years time frame, maybe we have to talk to everybody and satisfy everybody's needs. So uh, we're fortunate we have the permits. Uh, and, uh, and so we might expand it. So it might come up to over 2 million ounces. I feel confident that the geologists underestimated the, the resource. Uh, that's when we did those two bulk samples. And then, in, in all fairness, 500 tons of bulk sample is not not very large. 1,000 tons is not large. So uh, my original bulk sample, you know, was like I said, was 600 to 1.2, 1.4 million tons over over uh, over uh, a three-year time frame. And 80,000 ounces, I felt, would have been uh, a reasonable measure of, you know, is the gray really there? Uh, but unfortunately, you know, I am gold had uh, their own financial challenges. Uh, they're doing quite well. And it's interesting, like, you know, and they'll be looking for rock as well. You know, so I am gold. We're looking for rock. They have a mill that's 40 kilometers away. We already amended their permit so they can take a rock at any time. And of course, Agnico, you know, they'll be looking for rock and we can meet some of their criteria. Uh, we've also spoken to them. But, you know, it's not one of these things whereby, you know, you're sending over 5,000 tons. Like I'm sending over life of the mind, be millions of tons for these people to, to process the rock. So it takes a while. In the environmental permits in the old days, you basically had one permit. You mine, you mill everything. We have 26 permits just to mine the rock, not even milling. So it, it's complicated now. It takes a while, but kind of confident. We're in the right area on the Cadillac break. And uh, a lot of mills are short, you know, and then in the next two to three years, we even uh, greater demand. Right. So if, if I look at, so he's done 150,000 meters, which that's a lot of money, right? Um, over, I don't know what time frame. So that, there's some decisions made there about how you manage money. There's some decisions made about, you know, let's say you're staying alive by, by, by taking uh, cash that perhaps you, you didn't want to take, so not, not the form you wanted to take it. You need to be really clear with the, the market, with the audience, with your shareholders, with prospective shareholders about where you are now and where you, how you get to where you need to be. If you need to make this interesting in terms of selling rock for others to process and for others to you know, you know, take all of that upside, what's in it for shareholders now? Why, why is this the best 
model available to this company? Well, we created something else in our downtime. Uh, it took us a little under five years to get it to the exchange. We created this thing called Title to the Metal, whereby the shareholders actually own the gold in the ground at cost of production. It's actually, I'll call our personal royalty. Uh, so the shareholders can participate in that. And of course, you know, uh, it's not exciting as drilling and stock. You know, we originally took the stock from Halted to a market cap of 121 million in 18 months. Uh, you know, this still can happen. You know, the markets are turning around. But uh, so we gave options to these people. Look, you can participate in the common shares. We'll drive it, drill it. You know, we might take it to 2 million ounces or might take it to 5 million ounces in the next, you know, two to three years. And uh, I'm sure somebody will knock on their doors. We got three offers already. We declined them. I know it sounds a little odd, but uh, I'm looking more of a person who has an operating facility and they can realize some value. And basically the deal is paper for paper. In other words, you give me a reasonable price, uh, you know, for the gold in the ground, give me your shares according to that reasonable price, not at five cents that we are now. It's, it's, it kind of devastated us. This this market really, not just us, but a lot of the juniors. And, you know, our next door neighbor is just, uh, Yorbo got devastated. And they were fortunate enough, they sold an asset, their asset, which is next to us, for 20 million. So, you know, we have a market cap of only 6 million or 7 million. And they sold their uh, resources smaller than ours, but they sold them for $20 million. So at least we should be worth $20 million. Okay, right? so you're looking at, okay, that's a nice comp. Um, to get to, you're talking about we maybe get to a million ounces, we get to two million ounces, get to five million ounces. Again, that's yet more drilling. Um, that's a lot of money if, you, yep. if we do it on a per meter basis. People can do the math for themselves. That's unlikely, right? You don't want to do that. You don't want to, well, well tell me, do you want to raise money to do that? Do you think the money's from that's happening, you know, gold price is high, as you say, to, you know, nearest hour at 2,800 gold. Um, You've got a lot of M and A happening, but that money's not going to cascade down through into the juniors anytime soon, right? So uh, we're excited about the frothiness of the market, but for people like you, you still got to you know stay relevant, got to stay alive. You've got to move this thing forward. How do you do that? What do you focus on? Well, right now, uh, just before we came here to talk to you, I was actually talking to two operators in the area, and uh, both are interested. And, and like I said, it's long-term thinking. It's, they're both interested. The, uh, the bulk sample that we're looking at doing, we're building a, a plant on site. The sampling plant is not just taking a sample. It actually produces product. Produces two products. Uh, one is um, a very high-grade uh, native gold component. And the other one is uh, uh, when we did our bulk samples, we produced uh, a high-grade sulfide concentrate, gravity concentrate. There's a buyer for that. So we've already got in touch with the buyers of the uh, of the concentrates. So basically, we've been making money on, on that. So either we raise a bit Wait, of money. You, you will be or you have been? No, no, we will be. We haven't been. We will be, okay. But we, give us, we did those two bulk samples, the 500 tons. Uh, the mission was, number one, get a grade. The second part of the mission was, can we produce product that the market will take from us? Yes. So... So that looks good. So that, that can be funded through these uh, preferred shares that we structured, whereby the people are entitled to, uh, uh, to the gold in the ground at cost of production. And then, of course, you know, we have the opportunity to raise money through our common shares. Which uh, So there's two things going on. Before we do anything, uh, we will wait to see what these uh, end users, or, or the milling people in the area, uh, if they're interested, like I said, we spoke to two of them just before I came to talk to you. Uh, they might say, look, Frank, you know, we're interested. Uh, a lot of these things I'm telling you right now, they're like two, three years out. But the fact is they might come in, they might invest, they might. And that's what we really need. Like, we are just a simple exploration company. You know, we, we are, um, actually, we don't even have an office, really. We've never had an office. So every, all the money we raise goes into the ground. Uh, we are, you know, a virtual office. Uh, we're all contractors. I'm a contractor to the company, and it was designed like that. Basically, you knock on my door, I give you the keys, and off we go to another adventure. And 
And that's what we are designed as. And, you know, like I said, we ran this thing up to, uh, you know, we were on the V50, the top 50 uh, venture stocks on the Toronto Stock Exchange when we did this. But markets that time were pretty crazy. I think a lot of people could have done what we did, but we did. They didn't do it. We were a top, in the top 50. Uh, we got devastated. We didn't sit still. We kind of said, let's, you know, evaluate our ore body. Uh, we did 20,000 meters of drilling. And I think we found stuff that it extends at depth. So, and we're confident in the area, uh, you know, a Cadillac break, uh, millions and millions, tens of millions of ounces have been mined. Maybe one of our days will happen for us that they'll mine our deposit and uh, the valuation will come out. So it's a combination of exploration, a combination of trying to sell our soul uh, uh, two to three years from now. But I think that's a better approach than somebody knocking on your door and giving you a very low price for your product. I'd rather see a serious player step in, take us out, and at that time give us a reasonable price for our shares. Okay, so you, so I, I'm just trying to, I, I mean, we can get into the ins and outs around the technology and the bulk sampling and what you think, you know, grades are versus reported and how many ounces you might be able to drill out yourself. But the bottom line is here, what I'm investing into is a company with gold in the ground, which is valuable to someone else. You'll take their paper. So, and someone investing in your company today could pick that up cheap. That's it. That's, that's the play. I'm picking up cheap stock today for future value, which potentially presumably is worth a lot more. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's a type of investment for uh, people who understand risk, right? And uh, we've made a lot of money with these investments over the year. It's not for everybody, but you also gave them the opportunity of people who like a little more conservative investment, which are these preferred shares which was a unique thing we created. Uh, it took us five years to get it through the exchange. We paid 650,000 legal bills to get this approved. And it's such a simple, simple thing, but the exchange never saw it. And then they finally agreed to it, but it took us almost five years. And we had to meet all these terms and conditions, which we have. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, it happens. And then of course, the common shareholders can also participate. We put a news release to that effect and become owners of bullion. And actually, in reality, you know, some of the investors called it a, a royalty program that says, whatever it is, you know, you decide, but you basically get metal. So if you have a metal account, and if you don't know how to get a metal account, we'll help you get a metal account. And there's some very serious players. We found the Europeans like that formula. We did quite a few presentations through Europe. Uh, we found also the Middle Eastern people. We were out in, uh, out, out, out in the Middle East, they, they loved it. And the Asians wanted it all. They wanted it on a level that is very hard to comprehend. Uh, and the model, they like it, but it cannot fit their needs. It's just, we're just too small of an ore body to justify what, what they want. Okay, and then let's look at, so let me look at the kind of, the type of drilling that you're gonna need to do. If, if, that, if that's the business model or potential business model for, for you guys, you've got this kind of, 456, say half, half a million ounces of inferred. You've got about the same again um, in all, all categories indicated. Are you, do you need to try and move that uh, indicated, uh, sorry, the, the inferred into the indicated uh, and give you that million ounce number before the people that you're talking to will be interested? Or are they happy with the data that you're able to supply today? I'm trying to get a sense of timing here. You know how quickly well, you it just, we... uh, it, the critical thing here, Matthew, is is um, I like to have an, an agreement with a major in the area. That gives you some degree of confidence. Since they operate in the area, they'll understand the geology in the area. Yeah, I tell you, you know what? Uh, you, you know, like we're below the break, uh, the, the Cadillac break. It's the same place, Osisco, where everybody thought there was nothing there. And I don't know if some of your investors remember Osisco. Actually, nobody wanted to invest with them. I knew the people when they were there. They bought a bankrupt asset. Nobody believed in them. And even at the end, I don't know if you remember, uh, and, you know, Kinroth stepped out, and I think it was a gold corp stepped out. They didn't believe they could achieve it. And, it, you know, became a billion-dollar company, right? You know, I, I, I'm just 20% explored on two kilometers. We have five and a half kilometers. So what can happen here? Don't know. 
I have a lot more confidence in people that say that are operating in the area. Says, you know, Frank, I think we could figure you out. What required now was deep drilling. Uh, we tried the deep drilling. You know, we started this original program, 120,000 meters with 20,000 meters. And you, know, you, you can look at our news release. There are two green lines on the far side on the right. And uh, that's going actually north. Uh, neither driller was able to hit our targets. We did a few shallow holes up to 800 meters. And we hit these grades, like, uh, like I mentioned. You, you get 107 grams a ton over four meters. There's something there. I and mean, we got multiple holes at very, very high grade. So it's possible that there's an extension. Historically, in the area, the deeper you went on a Cadillac break, the higher the grades. So it could happen, right? Uh, so there's a lot of potential. But, you know, you want a major that's operated in the area, and then I have some degree of confidence that they'll act responsibly versus, you know, the three offers we got were not people in the area. And, you know, they're very opportunistic. Uh, I can appreciate that. I declined them. Uh, I tell you how bad, how good these guys are. They actually waited for me at the airport to get off the plane to buy me a beer, to negotiate, you know, over a beer to take the mine over. You know, and I said, well, that's it. Very nice. Maybe it wasn't a good decision, but uh, I feel confident there's something massive here. Uh, I've been on a break for over 35 years. Uh, you know, I, I used to work for Agnico Eagle. Uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a mine called the Mogami. Nobody believed in it. Agnico Eagle had it. And Naranda was a joint venture partner, walked away from the deal. And then it came out to be a multi-million ounce deposit. And that was actually their core asset that saved Agnico Eagle. And Wonderful. You know, the deeper you went, the higher. To this day, they're still mining it. It's over 30 years and became a base metal mine with gold credits, right? So you find these things, but you need somebody big to come here and, and, and really make this make this perform. And uh, we have two people, two groups, you know, they're being realistic about it. And price of gold going up is a positive. So basically, basically this is what we do. We drill, we talk, and we never stop. It works for us. You know, we've done that to another one of our companies, which was also a, a wonderful disaster when we took it over. It, it was trading a penny and a half, three cents, and we, we ran that up. Uh, so basically, you know, like we're driven to succeed. Uh, you know, uh, my success is in paper, you know, uh, and I do, you know, what a good team, we do quite well, right? Okay. Well, like, um, Frank, um, what, what's, the, what's the next piece of news we're looking for from you? What, what, what are we well, expecting uh, here next? I, I, I'm waiting, like I said, I talked to these two, these two operators in the area. Actually, they're, they're, they're mined, they pour gold. And uh, uh, they're being cautious. You got to appreciate that. Uh, they need rock, but they're planning two to three years. Basically, the drill program will be designed to meet their criteria on deep drilling. The real value to this asset is underground. You know, why would you want to mine something at two grams or four grams open pit when you can mine at nine to 10 grams. So it's going to be a shipper, cheaper to ship. You know, you have to look at the oral economics. You know, if you're just looking at, oh, let's dig and ship, that's wonderful. But you know what? If your shipping costs, and it's not cheap. I don't know. You know, the diesel fuel is is not cheap. So it's one of these things, you know, the higher the grade, the lower shipping costs works better. You know, you have to look at the simple things, really, really simple things. So higher the grade, grade is king, you know. And and we have it. We have a very good high grade deposit. Historically, it was mine nine to ten, and I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to develop the mine to the criteria of the people going to take us over. It might take us two to three years, or they might step in sooner and say, "Look, you know, all your permits are in order. Let's let's do the deal, right?" Okay, so that means that you need to survive the next two or three years as well. Like like I say, positive gold environment helps, but it doesn't answer all the questions. So, you got to, you know, have you got a sense of at six, seven million bucks, how you raise money to do the things that you need to do? What's the kind of catalyst moments that should hopefully drive share price to like raise cheaper money? Uh, we had a lot of interest in these preferred shares and too much interest to the point that they're giving me more money than I need. And the reality is, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, we're looking at 20 to 25 million US. We've already talked to people. Uh, there's a group in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, there are a group of metal trailers, traders. They like the structure. There's another group. They're acting in New Jersey, New York. 
uh, area uh, in the state of New York. They like the structure. Uh, so they like the metal. It's a key thing. And then we have some people from the Middle East and Asia. But what they're asking for, we, we just we can't fit their, their needs. Anyways, uh, they're all offering more money. I have nowhere to take the money, and it's a condition. So I created what we call an evergreen clause in our contract. So in other words, we, we said, okay, we'll take 20 or 25, and we gave them the evergreen clause, but it's conditional. We have a place to mill it or the, uh, the plant is installed on site. So we did talk to an engineering group, an engineering company called FLL Smith. Uh, so we did talk to them, and I said, okay, you know, we're going to come back with a, a proposed uh, flow sheet, which they, they short they're supposed to give us. And then if everything looks well, hopefully the funding will come in through the preferred shares and minimize any dilution in our common shares. So in the event the plant starts up, uh, it'll probably produce gold, which we confirmed it can when we did this two bulk samples. And the gold will be this high-grade native gold, which is basically pure gold, and this high-grade uh, gravity concentrate, which we were able to get it up to 77 grams a ton. Uh, we worked with one group uh, for over 40 years. They'll take the material at that reasonable cost. So it, the potential is we have a lot of ways of going. Uh, so drill program, uh, if we raise a bit of money, we're not going to raise all the money at, at this price range. Uh, we did that last time. We do small raises. We drill, we talk, and we do some more. Uh, but the real value to this thing is if one of the majors was come in and said, look, you know, uh, we're interested two to three years. We want to or sooner take you out. Then the, the underground is developed for their needs. Um, you know, if you look at our, 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 our deposit, uh, it's at 50 degrees uh, from, from horizontal. Uh, it's not a mine that is uh, not uncommon, the way they mine in the area. We also found a lot of what we call rare earths and alkaline metals. Uh, we have a lot of rubidium. The value of the property for rubidium uh, is greater than the value of the gold. And recently we were approached uh, for the waste rock. We sold a lot of the old historical waste rock. Uh, we got a multinational out of Europe come in. And then the prices they quoted for us on the waste rock yeah, it's actually worth more than the gold in the ground. So, you know, we just want to focus on the gold. Uh, we don't know nothing about rare earths or, or alkaline metals. And uh, aggregate is, it's a big boys game. Uh, we're not into that. So we kind of indicated to them, they signed an NDNA with us. They said, we want it. Uh, and I said, we go ahead. And it's going to minimize my closure costs. And he said, no, no, we want to pay for it. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I was hoping you would say that. But uh, basically, now our environmental footprint, the way we designed, if it happens, uh, we don't have a waste. Actually, uh, we also said, look, uh, we have tailings. And he says, oh, we, we want to know what's the size of your tailings. We also need the sand. So these are all things that might happen. But the reality is we know we have an ore body. Uh, we know we can expand it. All the other stuff I just mentioned about the waste rock and the rare earths, life like metals, if it happens, it happens, but it is not our skill set. It's basically we're focusing on, on the gold, and uh, we seem to have gotten something so far. It's pretty good, and I think the markets are, you know, gold's going in the right direction. Well, like I said, I, I, I kind of agree. It's keep keep it simple, I think. Keep it, keep it simple. Um, they, yeah. Everything else is a distraction for me, anyway. Look, Frank, like I appreciate that kind of that update, and you know, and give it, you know, being honest about how you kind of having to uh, jig and weave to you know stay 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 relevant, stay at the table, um, play the game, as it were. Um, and I am intrigued to sort of see what comes uh, out of you next. Okay, so stay yeah. in touch. Let me know. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Always a pleasure, Matthew. Always a pleasure.